hello there. This video is likely to be quite emotional because it's on a subject that is very dear to my heart but I'll try to keep it as calm and factual as I possibly can. It's directed uh, to Jehovah's Witnesses, non-Jehovah's Witnesses, people who don't know anything about the religion and people who know only too much about the religion. But this video is especially directed to Niels Muzhniks, who is the Commissioner for Human Rights of the Council of Europe. And the reason why I'm directing this video to Mr Muzhniks will become obvious, hopefully, towards the end. Now, this video is on the subject of human rights and the Jehovah's Witness practice of disfellowshipping. Now, to make things clear, I need to first give a very brief history of the practice of disfellowshipping as, uh, as used by Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'll try and be as concise as possible on a very complicated subject. But as recently as 1947, there was an Awake, an Awake, an Awake magazine as published by the Watchtower Society that described the practice of excommunication as a weapon and as an instrument of ecclesiastical power and secular tyranny. Here is the, a printout of the magazine article in question and I will be putting links in the description below for anyone that wants to check this out themselves. But it said the it was basically criticizing the Catholic Church, okay? And it said the hierarchy's excommunication as a punishment and medicinal remedy finds no support in these scriptures. It quoted a number of scriptures. In fact, it is altogether foreign to Bible teachings. So according to the Awake, the practice of excommunication is foreign, or was foreign, they considered back then, to Bible teachings. And then it said, towards the end of the page, as the pretensions of the hierarchy increased, the weapon of excommunication became the instrument by which the clergy attained a combination of ecclesiastical power and secular tyranny that finds no parallel in history. So excommunication as a practice is described as not just foreign, um, altogether foreign to Bible teachings, but also as a weapon, an instrument of punishment. Now this view changed quite dramatically in 1952 when the disfellowshipping arrangement was introduced by the Watchtower Society. And to prove that it was introduced in 1952, I'll put a reference below to the Watchtower 2006, May the 15th, pages 24 and 25, which says, particularly since 1952, Jehovah's Witnesses have given increased support to an arrangement that helps to protect the congregation. That is the disfellowshipping of unrepentant sinners. Of course, truly repentant wrongdoers are lovingly helped to make straight paths for their feet. That's the 2006 May 15th Watchtower. Now, as hypocritical as this U-turn was, from first saying that excommunication was non-biblical and a cruel instrument of punishment, to then saying, well, it's to help sinners, as hypocritical as that was, that stance that was introduced in 1952 was at least um, a much better improvement on what we have today. Why do I say that? Well, from 1952 through to 1981, if there was something you didn't like about being a Jehovah's Witness, such as the disfellowshipping of a friend or family member, such as the atrocious handling of child abuse, such as the stigmatisation of higher education, such as the terrible treatment of women and the treatment of domestic violence. If you didn't like any of those things, you could vote with your feet. You could leave the religion and there would be no 
a mandate on your friends and family for them to shun you. You would just be treated as someone who had walked away and there would be no, uh, no organisational mandate for your friends and family who are witnesses to treat you as though you didn't exist. But then, in 1981, September, the September 15th Watchtower of 1981 rolled off the press. And on page 23, it's quite a long quote, but you'll need, this is important to understand where I'm going with this. On page 23 it says, One who has been a true Christian might renounce the way of the truth, stating that he no longer considers, considers himself to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses, or wants to be known as one. When this rare event occurs, the person is renouncing his standing as a Christian, deliberately disassociating himself from the congregation. The Apostle John wrote, They went out from us, but they were not of our sort, for if they had been of our sort, they would have remained with us. Or a person might renounce his place in the Christian congregation by his actions, such as by becoming part of an organisation whose objective is contrary to the Bible, and hence is under judgment by Jehovah God. So if one who was a Christian chose to jo join those who were disapproved of God, it would be fitting for the congregation to acknowledge by a brief announcement that he had dis disassociated himself and is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And here's the kicker. Paragraph 16. Persons who make themselves not of our sort by deliberately rejecting the faith and beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses should appropriately be viewed and treated as are those who have been disfellowshipped for wrongdoing. That was a change. That was a key change. Because from that, ma from literally from that magazine article onwards in 1981, there ceased to be a provision for you to just vote with your feet to just walk out of Jehovah's Witnesses and move on with your life. There ceased to be that provision. If you decided to abandon your faith, if you decided to change your religious views, you were to be treated as a sinner and you were to be treated the same as a disfellowshipped person, namely you were to be shunned, not just by people in your congregation but by your friends and family. You were no longer allowed to leave the religion, you were trapped in it. You couldn't leave even if you discovered that it wasn't what they call the truth. So just to drive this point home, this is where human rights come in because Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says very clearly everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. So it is my right and your right as a human being watching this video to believe whatever the hell you like and to change your belief if you feel it's appropriate without being punished for doing so. Now ironically it's on the basis of this very same provision in human rights legislation that the Watchtower, as we speak, is fighting not just for the freedom of religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, but for their right to be conscientious objectors. And this brings us to a video that has recently been released. And it's introduced by Paul Gillies, who happens to be the director of the International Bible Students Association in Britain, which, for the record, is a registered charity. Now, I'm going to play you the clip of Paul Gillies introducing a video on the issue of conscientious objection. <laughs> 